I, I went ahead and just plugged it in, but I, I think like, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a night and half a day, I think I got 3%. <laughs> That's it? Yeah, yeah, because it was just 120, you know. It, 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 can't, it can't pull more than like, you know, 10 or 15 amps on there. So it, 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 would, it would take a week, a week and a half or two weeks, it said, you know. But I mean, I, I had it, so why not plug it in, right? Let's see, Mexico. I don't know, um, have you seen anybody who has that Solterra? They're not sold yet. See, I've seen people, I saw one guy drive around in one. Are you serious? Yeah, I saw somebody in, uh, here in town that was driving one around. A Subaru Solterra? Yes. I didn't think those were actually on sale yet. Let's see if this helps. Uh, the dealer up here, uh, they were offering them, I got the... Uh, advertisement, you know, come on in, pick one up for fifty-five thousand dollars. Wow. What is it? The Solterra is the electric car version of the Outback. Well, maybe I don't know if that's a fair comparison. Uh, maybe it's the Ascent. I don't know. Do you know uh, what body it has? It, it's different completely. Does it have four motors? Say again, bro. Does it have like four motors? I don't know anything about the motors. Well, if it's all electric, you know, I mean, don't they like put a motor on each wheel on the all-wheel drive ones? You know, I'm not sure. I, I just, I was curious. Uh, it is all-wheel drive. And it does have symmetrical all-wheel drive. But I, I just, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know about enough about it technically um, to see if it, if it has one or two motors or how the hell it works. But yeah, I, evidently you're right, David. I, I, I guess I didn't realize those were actually at dealerships. I just discovered something on the radio. The one right now that, that, that is getting the, <laughs> it's not uh, that. <laughs> all the attention is the... Uh, uh, the new Hyundai uh, electric ones, because they, they have really good range and they're affordable. Is it the Eon or Ion, whatever it is? Yeah. Okay, I've seen those advertised. What's so good about them? Well, I don't, I don't know if there's anything good about them. I just that that that's the one that's popular. Um, they have pretty good range. They're the price is, uh, um, you know, is reasonable, and that just seems to be the most popular one. That's, that's the one that's really hurting Tesla right now. Well, what do they cost? Uh, any idea? Yeah, they have a bunch of models, but let me look. My uh, sister-in-law's husband bought one. They had it for about a year, and he just actually uh, rear-ended somebody in it recently. <laughs> so it's done. Um, I seen it. They drove it up here once. They had to be very careful to figure out how they could make it here because of the charging stations. So they, they can't charge it at the Tesla places. They have to go to, like, uh, uh, Walmarts and stuff like that. But anyway, yeah. So I don't remember the actual name of it, but it was a little blue Hyundai. And um, I, I think they weren't real impressed with the range on it. Is that, is that a Hyundai dealer when you're leaving Prescott Valley going into Prescott on the right-hand side up the hill? Is that a Hyundai? Kia. That's Kia. Okay, so Hyundai must be over there by Finley. Toyota then uh, on Willow Creek Road. Well, you see, they're going to build a new one right by uh, Deepwell Ranch. It's going to be Finley something. I, I don't know if it's Kia or if it's Toyota or something, but right there at that intersection it says coming soon right by Deepwell Ranch. Hey, I just figured out something on the radio. There's a setting for the meter for average or peak. And so I switched it to peak, and now it says, hey, you're doing 100 watts on sideband. Well, how do yeah, you uh, figured, do that? Yeah, I figured it was something like that, man. How do you do, uh, Brent? What's that? How do you do that? Uh, go into, uh, geez, let me look again. Hold on, I can't remember. Let me see here. Okay, so you go into operations settings and then TX general. And then uh, scroll down, and you should see the thing for the meter. Operations? What are you talking about? Uh, 
push your function button and pull up that menu and then go into operation setting. Well, okay, I see. Uh, where is operation settings? I don't see that. I see it, okay. Yeah, at the very bottom. And then highlight the TX general tab. Okay, now what? Scroll all the way to the bottom. It's the very last one. It says meter detector, and it'll say average or peak. And it definitely is accurate that way. So what, uh, mine says average. Switch it to peak, and you'll switch your meter and watch it. You'll see you're hitting 100 watts probably. But if you look at it right now, and you have it on power, and it's on average, it'll look like it's like 10 or 12. You'll have to, like, scream into the microphone for it to look like 100 watts. I have my meter set on SWR. You have yours set on power? Um, I I switch it back and forth, but I, I initially noticed first getting this radio, I was like, this thing doesn't do 100 watts on sideband. Well, I don't care because I don't... Uh, I, I'm always in, in my amplifier, so I only run about 30 watts, 35 watts into the amplifier. Right, well... <clears throat> My my amplifier needs 100 watts to do legal limit, so I noticed that it was like a little bit less than with the ICOM, but that, that ICOM, you know, that thing runs pretty hot. I forgot, how do you change the meter from SWR to power? Just touch the meter. I, I found out pretty much everything. You just touch. I just learned today if you touch the last three digits of the frequency, it'll give you a keypad to t type in the frequency you want. I didn't know that either. You can get a keypad with this? Yeah, no, just touch the last three digits of your frequency. It'll bring up a, a, a display like a keypad that you'd see on the 7300. You're kidding me. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And that's what, for just entering frequencies? Yep, so you could put whatever you want in there, and that way you don't have to scroll through, just punch it in. Well, I never understood why is there uh, three zeros in 853.000. Because it's super accurate, I don't know. You can change your step and different things like that, but when you, when you touch those last three digits, yeah, it will pull up the keypad, just try it, you'll see. Can you do multiplication on the keypad too? You can. Not. <laughs> I was just joking. Can I balance my checkbook on it? You'll have to ask Clark about that one. I don't know. Maybe uh, you can call somebody through the Ethernet connection on the back of the radio. What was the question? <laughs> can I balance my checkbook on the uh, 710 uh, using the keypad? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I saw that you can do remote operation with it with some kind of uh, the SCU something interface. Yeah, you have to have that interface. Is that expensive? They're not expensive, it's just that they're never in stock. Yeah, but this radio, I noticed almost everything you can touch, it will uh, actually uh, change something. You can, David, you can even touch the LSB mode, and it will pull up that also. I uh, learned that as well. I've been kind of just sitting here reading the manual on the computer in PDF format, so um, I'm studying up on it. And the, um, the contour and the notch and all that stuff, when you use them together, man, they work amazing. What is treatment TX inhibit? What does that mean? What is what? Under operations, right above meter detector, it says TX inhibit. What does that mean? Oh, uh, probably uh, bands that aren't uh, allowed to transmit. This thing here will not let you go on 60 meters except for if you're in memory mode too, which is annoying. Oh, I see what you're saying, TX inhibit. Well, I think if you turn it on, it won't transmit. Emergency frequency TX. Interesting. So when I hit the peak button, 
I want to go back to average. How do I go back to average? Go back into that menu and just touch it and change it back. I touch it and nothing happens. You got to touch it where it says peak and it will highlight it and you'll see the arrow key. And hit the arrow key to go backwards. Just like this. You, you see the little arrow when you highlight it? There'll be an arrow on it and you just hit that arrow. It'll scroll through to the side and it'll go back to average. Do you go to the right arrow or the left arrow? Left. Yeah, it doesn't do it. You sure it does. I just did it. Oh, okay. Now it did it. All right. I didn't touch the right place. But yeah, so um, that's kind of cool. It has that function. I don't know. Does the 7300 do that? No. If it does, I never found it. I was sitting here going, God, what is it? what's up with this thing? You know, the meter seems weird, you know. I wonder where Steve is. You guys could have a 710 three-way. Did he buy one? Yeah. Certainly has enough radios already. <laughs> so do you use the Contour a lot, uh, Brent? Um, I had never found it effective on any other radios until this one. KG7HVR, a better ID. The ID police will uh, um, see if I have any ideas. Yeah, I think the best thing about this radio is um, with the two speakers, even without them, it still sounds really good. It has really, really pleasant audio. It's, it's really nice to listen to, and you can get rid of a lot of noise. I don't know if it's like super sensitive on receive, but just know that it's easy to make it pleasant to listen to. And you know, some radios just really, you know, after a while, you're just like, I just want to turn this thing off. See, when you go, when I go to contour, what dial do I use to turn the uh, contour up and down? I never could figure that out. Hold on, I'll tell you in a second, because I have to just try it to figure it out, because I always do the wrong one. It's either the function or the other uh, knob below. Okay, so it's the bottom knob. Tap the bottom knob, you'll see it, it and you need to turn it quickly over to contour, and then tap it again, and it'll turn it on, and then, then once you do that, then you can adjust it. And you'll see it shift through your, your pass band up at the top there. Oh, you just, okay, you tap the same button twice, got it. Yeah, and it works the same way with the width and all that. Um, it's kind of tricky because it's not really what we're used to on an ICOM, you know. But I, I find with the contour off, it's almost like shutting the preamp off. Or not, I mean, shutting the attenuation off. The, the, uh, yeah, I hear the signal more clearly. It depends on where you move it to. And then also, you could use the contour, you could use the notch, or you could use the width all together. And, and once you, you start to really play around with that, you can sometimes really get rid of a nearby offending signal. I haven't tried it yet. I should try it because I know there's somebody below us. But um, I was playing around with it earlier uh, on contesters and stuff, and I found it was pretty good. So, But they weren't as strong as these guys are. You see, when you move the contour, the line up on the little uh, uh, hexagram or whatever it is on the top moves back and forth. Yeah, that's your pass band. So when you narrow the width, that thing will narrow the width. And what you're looking at is when you see those signals moving, when you're talking or receiving, those signals are the signals that are within your pass band. Yeah, Clark, I think you're going to need to buy one of these. I think you'll like it. Yeah, I'll pick one up. $8.99 at, uh, um, well, you know, it's not $8.99, but it's $9.94. I, I honestly, I think, 
hey, just buy the other one, get the speaker with it, you know, because you're probably going to want to have it on the table, and it, it just looks so much nicer with the matching speaker. Uh, for 100 bucks, you can't buy the speaker for 100 bucks from HRO. Um, you you uh, look on DX Engineering, and I think they want like $140 for the speaker. HRO wants 119 Are you still there, Nate? He's checking on the car.